we kind of get spoiled by with the dirt and the progressive banking and the way the track's laid out. It's really great racing. Some of the best races are just some of the weekly shows here. My name's Rodney Wing. I own the racetrack here at Why Not Motorsports Park. Uh, we've had it for about 17 years now. Uh, the, uh, we live right here on the property. It's 50 acres of land. We live right here on the property and got my race car shop and everything right here. And so we, uh, that's what we do every day. In, in 1998, this place closed down and uh, they built another track, Queen City Speedway, on the other side of, uh, the other side of Meridian there uh, near the airport. And it raced for seven years. As a driver, I raced. I started racing here before it closed down, and then I raced to Queen City a good bit and all over the place. So it's sitting here dormant for seven years. There was pine trees growing up all through the bleachers and all in the racetrack, and uh, you know everything was really d dilapidated and deteriorated. When I found out the place was for sale, I tried to get a few other people to buy it, and nobody seemed to be interested in it. So shoot, I could buy that and just sell my piece of land I got and move my house out there, just you know, have me a test track if nothing else. So. That was my thinking when I bought it. I didn't have any more money to put in it, and uh, you know, but I was thinking maybe one day I could get it open. When we first purchased the place, we just kind of put out the word that we'll have a work day out there at the track for anybody that wants to come help. And the very first day we came out here and started working, at uh, we started about seven o'clock. People just started trickling in, helping and stuff. And somebody looked up at lunchtime and they counted. It was 75 people here working, and there was 14 chainsaws running at one time. I mean, that was that was, and people were cutting trees that put them in the trunk of their cars. I mean, it was just a, a amazing to see the outpouring of support and people come and started helping. And so before you knew it, that we bought the place in January and then in May, we had it ready to race. We've done a lot of improvements, uh, you know, over the time. The main thing I guess we've improved on is we went back to the old original dirt that they had. We get dirt from a few miles up the road and uh, we, we get the dirt and haul it and put it on the racetrack and it's really good, uh, good clay without much sand in it at all and it really, promote you know makes for really good racing so that's that's probably the the thing that makes us look good here we can miss the setup on the track if you will and it still usually provides real good racing you know whether it's a little dry or a little wet either way it seems to really you know have a lot of side by side action so that's uh that's one thing that really stands out for why not heck i could be wrong but i mean it seems to work out pretty good here but the main thing i saw is you can't have a lot of sand in your racetrack the racetrack can't be abrasive you know and then you got to have progressive banking. You know, it's got to be flatter on the bottom and then more banking on the top. You know, so the outside guy with the longer way around has more banking to lean on and to, to run around the short way around the track. You got to slow down because it's flat down there, you know, to run around it. And so that kind of creates a, a equal playing field. So you got one guy out there on the outside, you know, wide open, just zinging his motor all the way around, and another guy just putting around the bottom, and they end up at the, at the, the flag stand at the same time.